In this video, we are going to be diving into 32 tips and tricks within ChatGPT so that by the end of this video, if you are a beginner, you will be a ChatGPT pro. So grab your notepads and your iced coffees and let's get right into this. ChatGPT tip number one is to assign roles to ChatGPT before typing off your question or your command. Now, when you assign a role to ChatGPT, you give it a personality or a persona to act like, and then every time ChatGPT responds to you after your question or command, it will act in the persona that you gave it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So before assigning a role to ChatGPT, your prompts might look like this. Write a small birthday letter to my cousin, Timmy. Now, when I send off this message, ChatGPT will do just that. It will write a little birthday letter to your cousin, Timmy. Well, now let's assign a role to ChatGPT in order to spice up our creative writing. And whenever you're assigning a role, always start with act as. I'm going to keep this one simple, act as a pirate. And then we have our prompt of write a small birthday letter to my cousin Timmy. Now when I hit save and submit, it will talk as if it is a pirate and use completely different verbiage than the first letter, just because we gave it that system role to play. I mean, just look at the difference in the first sentence. In this one, it says, happy birthday. I hope this letter finds you full of joy and excitement on your special day. And if we compare that to the role of a pirate that we gave ChatGPT, it now says, Avast, tis a special day on the horizon for tis your birthday, me hearty. This is an awesome way to mix up your prompts, and it goes so much more in depth than just telling ChatGPT to act like a pirate. If you want to see how you can create your own personas in the prompt formula in order to create good personas, you can watch my video I have on assigning roles to ChatGPT right up there. ChatGPT tip number two is to format your outputs. ChatGPT does not have to respond to you in the form of plain text. You can have it respond to you in code, tables, numbered list, bullet list, comma separated values, the list goes on. So here's a quick example of formatting your text in a table rather than plain text. So I say, create a table of popular dog breeds sorted alphabetically and have a column for hostility, shedding amount, and price. Now when I send that off, it's not going to give us just plain text, but it will actually generate us this awesome table of a ton of dog breeds sorted exactly how we wanted them to. And when you add output formatting to your prompts, it's important to understand that you don't actually have to do this just to generate new content and a new output, but you can actually paste in existing content that you have and reformat it within ChatGPT that way as well. ChatGPT tip number three is to generate to-do lists within ChatGPT. Now this is very powerful because if you have a paragraph of text and there's some to-dos in there, but then there's also some filler information, you can tell ChatGPT to create a to-do list from that paragraph. Let me show you what I mean. So in here, we have this big arbitrary text from a mom to a son telling him to do these chores. But there's a bunch of filler information here, and this was just sent in a large text message. So if you work better in to-do lists, then this tip will be great for you. Maybe your boss sends you an email and you need to siphon through it and create a to-do list out of that email, but it's super long and you just want to know, what do I have to do right now? Well, ChatGPT is great at that. So before this entire paragraph full of different chores that this son has to complete, what we're going to do is we're going to hold shift and enter down twice. And now we are going to say to ChatGPT, generate a to-do list from this paragraph. And then I'm going to put a colon and now we can send it off. And from this big paragraph, ChatGPT will create a nice to-do list. So we know exactly what we have to do. So now when I send it off, it gives us a nice little to-do list here. So step one, take out the trash. Step two, water the plants, give the dog a bath, clean your room, go to the store and buy. And then it gives us a nice list of what we need to buy at the store. ChatGPT tip number four is to rename your chat logs for better organization. Now this tip is often overlooked and I even overlooked it myself. Usually I would just let ChatGPT generate all of the names of my chat, but when I realized that you could actually rename these, it helped me organize my dashboard a little bit better. So if you go into here, let's say we want to rename this chore list that we just got from last tip. What we can do is we can hit this little pencil icon and then we can delete this and give it our own name. So maybe you wanna organize it by number, by person, whatever it may be, you can list it here. Maybe I'll just name this one chore list and I will put the date. And when you're done making your edit, what you have to do is hit that little check mark and then it's nicely named for you. ChatGPT tip number five is to prompt follow-up questions. Now this one may seem a little bit broad and there are multiple follow-up questions you can ask ChatGPT, but it's important to understand that 
After your first response, the thread doesn't stop there. ChatGPT actually can keep on talking and going within that thread. And it doesn't have to be just questions either. It can be commands as well. You could tell ChatGPT to go a little bit deeper or explain something step by step. There are so many different follow-up commands based on your situation, but it's important to understand that you can learn a lot more when you actually keep on prompting follow-up questions or commands. Now let's take a look again at this to-do list example where we generated a to-do list from this paragraph and got all of these items. What we could tell ChatGPT to do is to organize these tasks based on how long they're going to take and then order all of these chores from the one that takes the most time to the least time. So what we've told ChatGPT to do in this follow-up question and command is give these chores an estimated time required and then organize them from high to low. So when we send that off, as you can see, this makes it much more powerful. So if we wanna get those hard, heavy tasks out of the way first, now we have them organized with an estimated amount of time. ChatGPT tip number six is to use explain it to a child within ChatGPT. Now this may sound a little confusing at first, but ChatGPT can actually explain certain topics as if it were trying to help a child understand what that complex topic was about. So if you're ever struggling to read an article or need help on a topic, you can do this technique. So for this example, let's say we just have a general topic that we want to explain to somebody and we don't know the best way to explain it. Well, oftentimes the way you explain it to a child and the thought process that goes into that helps adults and grown people understand the topic better as well. So what we can do is we can type in explain topic and then we can add to a five-year-old. And ChatGPT does a pretty good job. It starts by saying, so you know how you have toys that are special and unique to you? And even if you aren't necessarily explaining it to a five-year-old, it helps adults understand topics a little bit better as well. ChatGPT tip number seven is to change your dashboard appearance within ChatGPT. So if you go down to the bottom left-hand corner of your screen and you hit those little three dots and then go to settings, you can actually change the way ChatGPT looks. So if you want it on your system colors, what you can do is leave it at system. You can change it to dark mode, which I'm on right now, or you can change it to the blinding light mode. ChatGPT tip number eight is to share your chat thread links with friends. ChatGPT recently added this where you can now share your chat thread in a view only mode to other people through email. So let's say I wanted to show this explanation of cryptocurrency to one of my friends. What I could do is I could now hit this little share button right next to the rename button, and it will pop up with this new window here. It says share link to chat. You can rename your chat right here and you also have the option to either share your name or share this anonymously. Then what I can do is I can hit copy link. So if I were to go to that link, this is what it would look like. ChatGPT tip number nine is to change the tone of your writing. You can either do this with existing writing or generated writing that ChatGPT generates for you. So let's say you have an email and you aren't in your best writing mood and you wanna make this a little bit more formal well, what you can do is you can change the tone of your writing to be in a more formal manner. So we have this email that I'm sending to my fake boss and it says, hey John, hope this email finds you well. I wanted to give you a heads up that I won't be able to make it into the office today because I ain't feeling too well. So I have some odd text here because I ain't feeling too well. You know, it's pretty informal. And then I say, don't worry about me. Have a good one, Drake. We need to spice this up. We need to make this formal in order for my boss not to fire me because I'm leaving these types of emails. So what I can do is I can enter down a few times while holding shift, and then I can tell ChatGPT to make this email more formal. And now I'm going to send it off and ChatGPT will do a nice job at helping. As you can see, if you read the differences in the two, you can tell just by changing the tone of your writing, it makes this email a lot more sendable. You can really display your emotions with tones and that's why I like using them so much. So I can say, change the tone of that email to show anger towards my boss. And now when I send it off, as you can see, this email will be very angry. This line especially is pretty bad. It is rather frustrating to find myself in such a predicament, particularly after encountering an appalling lack of support from the management. Now I told ChatGPT to make this email depressing and it has an entirely new response. You can pause the video and read those and they turn out very nicely. It's something so small but powerful that you can add to your prompting in ChatGPT. ChatGPT tip number 10 is to consider purchasing my ChatGPT mastery course. Now if you've made it this far in the video, you're definitely interested in learning more about ChatGPT. So let me show you a little bit about what that course has to offer. In this course, you get a nice backend learning experience where you can change to dark mode, maximize your screen, and I have 25 plus private ChatGPT modules that are not shared on YouTube within this course. And I'll take a little scroll down if you wanna view 
some of the content. First, we go over the basics of ChatGPT, some of the use cases, beginner's prompting, then we get into advanced prompting. I dive deep into the plugins and web browsing features, ethics and limitations. Then I go into concepts about how I've applied ChatGPT for success in my life, from scaling my income to making health and workout plans customized to my specific metrics. And then this last section here shows you how to install the free Notion template that I also give you with access to this course. Now with the course, you'll also obtain entry to the ChatGPT Mastery Group, which is a private group of actively learning ChatGPT enthusiasts like yourself. So if you work better in a course, you know, self-study learning step-by-step -step how to become from an absolute beginner to a pro and a master of ChatGPT, then that course might be for you. So I'll leave a link in the top pinned comment in the description below so you can go to that page to get a little bit more information about that course if it's something that you're interested in. ChatGPT tip number 11 is to be concise within your prompting. Now I'm sure you hear this flying around a lot within the ChatGPT space to be concise but it is very important to be as concise as possible with what you want out of ChatGPT. It's also very important when you're doing more advanced prompting techniques to tell ChatGPT exactly how you want it to act or how you want it to format your output. If we take a look at this table I created within the output formatting tip, as you can see, this was a pretty concise prompt. Create a table of popular dog breeds sorted alphabetically and have a column for hostility, shedding amount, and price. I got straight to the point, I didn't use many filler words, and I listed exactly what I wanted within the table, and ChatGPT produced awesome results. ChatGPT tip number 12 is to change the style of your writing. Now, style and tone sometimes go hand in hand, but I like to think of style as something like celebrities, characters, or anything of that matter. So this could be an example of a style being used within your prompting in ChatGPT. I have what I want ChatGPT to do, so write a car detailing advertisement, and then I have in the style of, you can really change the advertisement by adding any celebrity, fictional character, non-fictional character, you name it. And in this case, we are going to be doing in the style of Darth Vader. So this could be quite interesting as a car detailing advertisement. I'm going to send it off. And as you can see, it gives pretty much everything that would be required in order for Darth Vader to actually be saying this advertisement. It even gives annotations for what would be good to add in for certain camera angles and sound production. So it says dark dramatic John Williams score intensifies. John Williams is the creator of the music of Star Wars. And it makes this advertisement very nice due to the changing of the style. In a galaxy plagued by dust and grime, one name stands above the rest. Imperial auto detailing. And then in the Darth Vader voice, you underestimate the power of a clean vehicle. It's very dramatic and it lists out this entire script for us in order to write this car detailing advertisement in that certain style. ChatGPT tip number 13 is to use ChatGPT for quick learning on a new subject. You can use ChatGPT in order to learn things so quick from summarizing articles to generating lists from generating key points of historical events on command. For example, I could say something like, create a list of all important political figures in World War II, and when I send it off, ChatGPT is giving us this huge list that we can easily learn from. So I find that this is an amazing way to learn because it just gives us the key points, we don't have to go searching around everywhere, and it's all right here within this one dashboard, and now I can just study this list in order to be educated on the political figures of World War II. So let's say you want to quickly learn this article, The Proven Path to Doing Unique and Meaningful Work on jamesclear.com. Well, what you can do instead of reading through all of this is you can highlight the entire article and hit Control C. Go over to ChatGPT and say, create a summary in the key action steps from this article I could apply today. Enter down and paste in that article. And now I can send that off and this entire article ChatGPT will summarize and give me key action steps that I can apply today. So what ChatGPT is, it went from having all of this information to having one nice summary with seven action steps. So you can learn new topics super quick using ChatGPT. ChatGPT tip number 14 is to consider upgrading to Plus if you haven't already. Now, if you are just using ChatGPT for writing basic blog posts or drafting emails, then this may not be necessary. But if you like diving deep into ChatGPT and you need that advanced reasoning, the plugins and the web browsing features, then it's definitely worth the $20 per month. You get priority access to new features when they come out. ChatGPT is always available, even when demand is high. And you also get ChatGPT4, which is awesome with its advanced reasoning and figuring out solutions to more complex issues. 
You also get plugins in web browsing, which is a whole nother realm of ChatGPT. ChatGPT tip number 15 is to view the plugin store. Now there are hundreds of third party integrations with ChatGPT that make ChatGPT so much more powerful than what it already is. So if I hover over ChatGPT4 and I go into the plugin section, I can hit this drop down and go to plugin store. Here I can take a look at all 77 ChatGPT plugin pages with eight plugins on each page. And I can even search these plugins based on a certain keyword. So if I want plugins that deal with YouTube, what I can do is I can scroll through all of these plugins that help with certain YouTube integrations. There are plugins that help you with advanced graphing based on your inputs, so it'll actually graph your information and put it within ChatGPT for you. There's plugins that can make shopping carts and grocery lists for you. So plugins add a whole new game to ChatGPT, and I wish I had more time to go over all of them. ChatGPT tip number 16 is to use the web browsing feature in order to analyze your links. So if you hover over ChatGPT4, you can now go to this Browse with Bing. Since I work on my website, let's see how I can improve my website through SEO. What I can do is I can paste in my link and then I can say, give me SEO recommendations for my homepage. And now ChatGPT will be able to analyze this link, click it, read the content, and give me SEO recommendations based on my website that I uploaded. Now with this web browsing capability, you can do all sorts of stuff from web scraping to data analysis to what I'm doing right now, getting SEO suggestions. ChatGPT can read the content on your page and then tell you what to do with it. So now ChatGPT is giving me custom SEO recommendations based on the link that I uploaded. ChatGPT tip number 17 is to templatize your prompts that work well so you can use them again in the future. So let's say in ChatGPT, I use this prompt in order to generate me a very good workout. I said, create me a 10 minute full body workout using five pound dumbbells. Let's say I went through with that workout and I really liked it. Well, instead of coming into ChatGPT every time and maybe losing that prompt structure, what I could do is I could templatize this prompt instead in order to make it easy to use. So I could hit this little edit button and now I can make this prompt a template by filling in any information that has the potential to change with brackets and labels. So instead of 10 minute, maybe what I could do is I could put bracket time and instead of full body workout, I could leave workout, but what I could do is I could put workout type, put a bracket, and maybe after time I could even leave minute because I don't wanna do anything more than 60 minutes. And then after using, instead of five pound dumbbells, I could put equipment. And now that I have this prompt all templatized, what I can do is I can copy it, paste it in a Google Doc or something like my ChatGPT organization hub. So this is the Notion template that you get access to with the course, but I also offer it on the side if you don't want the course, but you just want the template. But what I could do is I could hit add new prompt and I could give the prompt a name so I could do workout and I can type in the prompt right here. I can put it in a folder. I'll put it in general for now. So now anytime I wanna come use this workout prompt, what I can do is I can come in here, copy and paste it and head over to ChatGPT. ChatGPT tip number 18 is to revise existing text that you already have. So ChatGPT is all about generating that new content, but it's also important to remember that you can revise that text that you already have. You don't need to always only be generating content with ChatGPT, but you can use ChatGPT to check your grammar, change your style, and change your tones as I was showing you. So the tip revise existing text is more so a concept to remember when using ChatGPT rather than an actual applicable tip but do apply it to your ChatGPT workflow because it's very powerful. You can take what you have from your brain and make it even better. ChatGPT tip number 19 is to do step-by-step follow-alongs within ChatGPT. So this is great for difficult tasks. What you can do is you can tell ChatGPT to guide you step-by-step -step in creating whatever you're trying to create. Let me show you an example. What I have in ChatGPT is guide me step-by-step -step and help me create a terms of service for my website. Give me questions I can answer, and after I answer them, generate me the TOS in a proper format. Now, obviously, you would actually want to get legal help for this, but I'm just showing you the complex situations that ChatGPT can help guide you with step by step. So when I send it off, as you can see, it will do exactly as I asked, and it will help guide me through creating this terms of service. So now it gives me all of these questions that I need to answer in order for it to properly generate that terms of service that I needed help with. And then it says, once you've provided these details, we can start creating a basic draft for your terms of service agreement. And this just kind of helps you with complex situations, not necessarily legal stuff like this, but anything that involves a lot of thinking and a lot of problem solving, 
ask ChatGPT to give it to you in this format. ChatGPT tip number 20 is to use ChatGPT for entertainment purposes. Now it doesn't always have to be about productivity, getting stuff done as quick as possible and solving these complex problems, but you can also have a little bit of fun along the way. ChatGPT is great at storytelling. You can give it characters, a plot, it can be fake, it can be real, it can be custom to your personal life, and then it can generate fun and cool stories. ChatGPT is also great at music discovery, so you can type in a list of your favorite artists, your favorite songs, and say, find me similar songs that I can put on this playlist based on the information I've given you. It can do the same with film and book recommendations. So if you like a certain film or you like a certain book, you can type that into ChatGPT and say, give me more suggestions based on this. Once again, ChatGPT is limited in knowledge up to 2021. So if you do have anything past that, it might not understand it too well. Tip number 21 is to use ChatGPT for coding assistance. I've personally used this multiple times when it comes to my website because I am not a developer by any means. I know very little code and what I do know isn't enough to get me through. So I can type in my problems to ChatGPT and it can help work through some of that code. Let me give you a quick example about how I go about my code, which is probably a very bad way of going about it, but it actually works. So let's say I wanna change the look of this button. What I would do is I would hover over it and I would hit inspect and then I would copy the entire button class that I'm trying to change. Then I would hover over copy and select copy element. And then I would give my command, so help me change the CSS of this button to be orange and blue. And then I would just paste in that entire element I copied. And a lot of the time I just paste it in in this format that isn't very good. But when I send it off, ChatGPT generates a nice code block for me. And I would say 90% of the time, this method works for me when it comes to generating CSS. As you can see, it goes in depth. It gives me nice code blocks where I can copy this code. I can also upload existing code and ask ChatGPT, what am I doing wrong here? And it will give me a nice response on how to fix that. And a lot of the time it actually gives you the code in that fixed format. ChatGPT tip number 22 is to brainstorm new ideas. Now brainstorming in ChatGPT is one of its most powerful methods of learning and generating knowledge, in my opinion. It's what I actually use it for most. I like how it gives me all of these ideas and then I can pick and choose from a list of ones that I like. So I can type into ChatGPT something like, help me brainstorm business name ideas. And when I send it off, what it will do is it'll kind of guide me through this process on how it can help me with brainstorming. So it says to provide the most relevant suggestions, could you please provide me with more information? the industry, products, services, target audience, and any specific words or themes I would like to incorporate. So then it kind of gets your mind spinning. It's like, okay, so now I have a list of things that I can give ChatGPT and it will generate results based on that. So I've given ChatGPT extra information. Artificial intelligence is the industry and courses are the products. I want this name simple and luxurious. And then I can say something like, give me 20 suggestions and I can send it off. And this is just a great way to brainstorm. It kind of helps pick your brain on what you actually want and it gives you suggestions that you don't necessarily have to pick, but it's a good foundation and it's a good start to build off of. ChatGPT tip number 23 is to use ChatGPT as a tool for mediation. So if you have a central problem that two people are disagreeing on and you have both sides of the stories and you wanna settle this through the flip of a coin, well, what you could do is actually, instead of flipping a coin, use ChatGPT to decide which is the most logical way of going about this problem or who has the most rational idea when it comes to the issue. Now, of course, when it comes to much bigger problems, this is a bad way of going about it because ChatGPT can't feel physical emotion and emotion is completely out of play here. It's going strictly off logic. So what I've done is I've typed out this fake problem of two people disagreeing over who should get the last gummy bear within the bag of gummy bears. So my friend Jane and I are discussing this and we are arguing over it on who should get the last one. So what I tell ChatGPT is the problem is who should get the last gummy bear in the bag? Jane's argument. And then I list out Jane's argument. I should get the last gummy bear because I bought the packet and shared it with you. It's only fair that the purchaser gets the last piece, right? My argument, but Jane, I should get the last gummy bear because I dreamt about a giant gummy bear chasing me last night. It's a sign I need to eat this one to ward off any future gummy bear nightmares. And then we can ask ChatGPT, the mediator in the situation, who should get the last gummy bear? And ChatGPT gives a bunch of information on the outcomes of the argument. And it says, based on these considerations, Jane's argument seems more grounded and widely accepted in principles of fairness and respect. So in that case, 
Jane would win that argument. ChatGPT tip number 24 is to use ChatGPT in order to journal. Just like me showing you that example going through the step-by-step -step guides, ChatGPT can ask you questions in order to write an effective journal on your day. So what I've done is I've asked ChatGPT to ask me questions that I can answer for my daily journal, and after I answer them, format my journal from my text. So now when I send it off, ChatGPT will give me a list of questions in order to help me write a good journal, and then it will format it all for me. So now I've answered these questions with some arbitrary information, and when I send it off, ChatGPT will finish the job of creating this nice journal entry for me. And it does a pretty good job by asking you those important questions that go well within a journal, and it even gave me a nice journal entry date, which is today, July 3rd, 2023. ChatGPT tip number 25 is to export your chat logs to your email within ChatGPT. This can be a good way to secure and save your information, especially if you're learning something new and you don't want to lose that chat thread, then exporting your chat logs could be a good way to go about saving that. You can export your chat logs by going to the bottom left-hand corner of your screen and hitting those three dots, then going to settings. Next, go to data controls, and where it says export data, on the third row right there, you want to hit export. And then it gives all the information that will be exported, and this information will be sent to your email. So you're requesting a data export, and I can hit confirm export. And now it's saying I should receive an email shortly with all of my data. So now I can hit this download export right here. And this comes in the form of a zip file where I can open it, and then I can view all of my chat logs and conversations and different model comparisons. ChatGPT tip number 26 is to understand the limitations of ChatGPT. Now it's a bit more on the boring side of ChatGPT, but it's very important to understand these limitations so you don't get blindsided when you're trying to type in your prompt and something doesn't work or you don't know why the answers are answering in a specific way. So some of the most important limitations are its knowledge availability. That's why the web browsing feature is so awesome, but it's limited up to knowledge to September of 2021. So that is a limitation of ChatGPT. Also, it does have a bit of a bias because it's been trained on human knowledge from the internet. So if there is a bias on the internet, then it will also acquire some of that bias. Now, another limitation is it does sometimes generate non-factual or plagiarized information, so it's always important to check that. ChatGPT tip number 27 is to use human-like text within your inputs. You don't need to try to sound formal or try to make yourself sound like a professor when you're talking to ChatGPT. It's important that you talk to it as a human would talk to it because that's the kind of knowledge it's been trained on is human-like conversation. Now there's a fine line to draw between talking too much like a human and not being concise and providing proper context within your prompts as well. So you have to be careful with that. ChatGPT tip number 28 is to check your responses for plagiarism before copying and pasting your answers. So if you get a new story, a new creative writing, blog post, advertisement, whatever it may be, before you upload it to anything important, always check for plagiarism. Now, I haven't had any experience with plagiarism, but I have heard of others experiencing some. So before you upload your text to anything important, make sure that you check it for plagiarism so you're not accidentally taking somebody else's work. ChatGPT tip number 29 is to use ChatGPT for studying. So this is great if you want to, like I showed you earlier, learn something very quickly by summarizing it, but you can also use it for more of a studying concept like flashcards. So if we take our list of important World War II political figures from earlier and we paste it into ChatGPT, I can say, here's a list of some important political figures during World War II, and then I can list out all of those political figures and what they were doing at the time. And next I can tell ChatGPT to generate me flashcards and give me a quiz. So I told ChatGPT to generate me flashcards and these political leaders and quiz me by saying the description and I have to answer with the name correctly. If I'm correct, say correct and move on. If I'm incorrect, say incorrect, then give me the right answer and then move on. So we have some complex descriptions here for ChatGPT. That is why I am in ChatGPT4, but I'm going to send this off and now ChatGPT is going to generate some interactive flashcards. But what I can do is answer and if I get it correct, let's see if it does its job. So I'm going to paste in that answer there and this should be correct. Let's see what ChatGPT does. Correct, let's move on to the next one. And then it goes on to the next question that I have to answer. So this is great for studying or you can even do this with job interviews for a specific position as well. ChatGPT tip number 30 is to use your generated knowledge in order to create more creative writing. So this is kind of a cool little approach and it's more of an advanced prompting technique, but what you're actually doing is you're creating knowledge within ChatGPT you're taking that knowledge that you created within ChatGPT and generating more creative writing in ChatGPT. 
So first what I can do is I can generate some knowledge. So for this example, I'm going to say, give me 10 cowboy movies before the year 1950, and now I can send it off. And now that I have all of these 10 Western movies generated, what I can do is I can use this curated knowledge that I came up with, and then I can use this knowledge that was generated in order to make some new creative writing. So now that I'm still in my chat thread, I can write out something like, write a blog post about how these films impacted the Western genre and Hollywood. So now I'm using this curated knowledge that I generated with a custom prompt, and I'm using it to create yet another custom output for ChatGPT. And now it's going to go into this big blog post about how each of these impacted the Western genre and Hollywood, each of these movies that it generated. ChatGPT tip number 31 is to create personalized plans based on your situation. Now there are so many examples here, I wish I could get into them all, but what you can do is if you want a custom diet, a custom health plan, you can give ChatGPT your goals, then you can also give ChatGPT certain metrics about yourself, whether that be your age, weight, height, and what it will do is it will generate customized plans in whatever it is, whether that's boxing, dieting, weightlifting, meditating, reading, whatever you want a personalized plan for. If you input the important metrics about how long you want to be doing it, what your age is, how you've dealt with doing this in the past and how you want to do it in the future, ChatGPT can really get you some awesome customized plans, especially when using ChatGPT4. ChatGPT tip number 32 is to watch my free content that I make on ChatGPT. I will link a playlist right here. Now, if you would like to go more in depth and you love learning about ChatGPT, then also consider purchasing my course using the link in the description or the top pinned comment. You'll get access to a group and a bunch of modules that are ever updating. With that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe for more free ChatGPT content, and I will see you in the next video.